This is the Blockade Pimple Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me as always, halfway across the world, it's Jared Morgan. Yeah, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. How are you going, Chris? <laughs> I'm doing good. We're doing a little uh, take two after some uh, some little uh, computer issues, but we're back mm. and running. Um, yeah, I'm doing awesome. How about yourself? Oh, yeah. I'm doing real good. But um, my fingers are tired, Chris. You know why? Why is that? Well, because I've been playing pinball nonstop all week, pretty much. Um, <laughs> That's right. You've uh, you've been uh, playing a little uh, uh, pinball festival of sorts. That's right. It's a B Pack 2022 um, Unleash the Beast. It's called, um, and it's been running now for um, eight days. This is the final day, uh, and that's been running for, and it has been an absolute blast. Has been. 70 pinball machines over in one venue alone. Oh, um, that's glorious. Seeing that. Oh, it was. Oh, it was, it's just amazing. And from all different eras too, like we're talking about, we've had some EMs there. We had okay. some EMs on the floor playable, including one that was 50 years old. So one with a ball elevator instead of a solenoid that kicks. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So every, everything from that era all the way up to Toy Story 4. Um, wow, which they which Go they on, bought all the way to new school. school. Look at that, the real new school. Yeah, I it, like and got to play the game. It's not worth nineteen thousand dollars Australian, but <laughs> it's nice. Um, uh, I, I you know for that money, I'd much rather have a, a Guns and Roses for like a thousand dollars less. Um, to be perfectly honest, which is a real shame because the theme is great. We all love Toy Story, but I'm, just, I'm not getting it from the game. Although. That being said, I haven't had a lot of time to get on it because it's been non-stop played um, and very hard to actually get uh, a flip on it. But right. I did manage to get a couple early on in the show. Um, so at least I did get to play a little bit. But yeah, there's like, you know, uh, my two System 80s there plus two more System 80s all running Pascal boards, which is a pretty good advertisement for Pascal right. over there in France for flip. Um and various games like there's a future spa there really really um it's plays condition future spa but plays really nice mm -hmm. so who cares what it looks like right right um but yeah so many different um so many tables to mention i uh, even have one of the brand new haggis pinball fathoms there as well oh um, did you get to play with that yeah i know whenever i walked up to it i couldn't get the start so um i don't know what was going on there um so yeah, there was like a couple of 90s, but they had a really, really nice jackpot there with a, um, a color DMD, but it wasn't like a, a screen. It was actually a color LCD or LED DMD. Oh, wow. With, yeah, geez, it was sharp, so bright. Um, and they had like, all they needed was pinbot and they could have had the, the <laughs> trifecta. Because there was a brighter pinbot there as well. Was it a, uh, a was it a two point oh brighter pinbot or regular? Oh no, it wasn't. Unfortunately, um, I would have loved it to be a two point oh. Someone really needs to buy one and get a two point oh conversion kit and bring it along because, geez, oh that would be so much fun to play. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my games uh, have not missed a beat. They have been featured in I think nearly every single competition that's been run at Brewdog. They've featured on the BPAC stream several times um, being played. And because uh, no one has ever, I was right, no one has ever played these. Even some American folks that are over, uh, we've got uh, Stephen Bowden and uh, Eshika Lefkoff and um, all these folks have flown in for the points, basically. Um, <laughs> Got to get them and, IPA points. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, definitely yesterday because it was Masters, Brisbane Pinball Masters yesterday. Okay. And they didn't finish. I got a post from the tournament director, Jason Lambert. Um, he posted six hours ago. So that was like at least 12 a.m. that that's when the competition finished. Jeez. After a whole day. They started at 10. No, no, uh, no. Uh, you can warm up from nine, starting at ten. So that's so much pinball. This is why I don't go into those tournaments, Chris. Like I was gonna say, it's it's like going to a poker tournament or something. Like it becomes an endurance uh, factor more than just yeah. how well you play. Well, that's that's true. Like the I sort of did one of the the formats was over at um, um, another venue. Um, this was on a Wednesday here, and it was over at a place called Yabula Pinball Club which actually operates out of a conference center. 
and they have their own collection of pins. So it was 70 pins at, at BrewDog plus these pinball machines over at Yabula. Um, I think we had a total of 20 machines over there, ranging from um, 90s, mostly 90s um, top tier um, 90s DMDs. We had, uh, I think there's two Jersey Jacks there, there's a dialed in and um, Wonka. Uh, there's also a bank of American pinball pins there because the distributor supplied all the machines oh, okay. um, there. Um, plus, you know, there's various other machines there as well from different areas. We've got like a, a getaway and even Black Rose there. <laughs> there's even a Street Fighter 2 yeah, well. there. Which is yeah, no one wants to play that. No, but... not so much. <laughs> <laughs> but that's one of those you walk event. you walk by it and you go, oh, maybe I'll put a quarter in it, and you put your quarter in, and then you play one ball and you go, maybe I'll just leave the other two balls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's right. Unfortunately, like it's good theme integration in that one. Yeah, but it's just a boring game. Um, but the funny thing is, I'd rather play a an eighties like early eighties solid state than that. <laughs> even though it's got more features on it, which is saying a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that Yabula Pinball Club, like that was a, we started at 10 o'clock and we finished at 8 p.m. Um, but it was a, um, like a match play event, which means that you get randomly paired with four other players on a random machine and you just play that, play that game. You play, you know, each player does their balls. Yeah. Um, you record the, the winners in order. Mm -hmm. And then you wait for the round to finish. And of course, you know, we had good players there. So luckily the, the conference venue is really well set up. They, they got these amazing couches that you can just vegetate on while you're waiting for the round to finish. And there was beer there and uh, there was some good food places outside that you could just bring your food in and eat. So it was, it was a pretty chilled out affair. And that's my sort of competition, yeah. like, you know, that or flip frenzies um, uh, where you just basically play back to back pinball until you, you can't play it anymore, which is just great. So the, so important, the, the important question then is, uh, seeing as mm -hmm. how you're saying that your machines have been featured and uh, have been performing well, have you gotten any offers yet? Um, I've been, someone has said, I would really like to buy those off you. Um, in fact, I think probably if I wanted to sell them, I could get two uh, two sales for them um, pretty quickly. Um, but given the reaction to these games, I'm sort of going, mm, should I? Right. Uh, should I actually keep them so that I have control over them and can put them in the competition next year so people can play them again next year? Um, because I've seen some, some games on the floor at BrewDog. Um, they were there last year and they're there this year. And they're just as fun to play. And I'm just concerned that if I sell these two titles, that's the last people are ever going to see them. Right. Um, so maybe it's a matter of you hold on to them, let some more people get a chance years. to play them, and then yeah. uh, see where. And who knows? Maybe by then the uh, you know the people are a little more desperate and uh, kick up the price. <laughs> well, look. Uh, obviously, if I get an offer I can't refuse, then I will right. not refuse the offer. Right. But um, I have to, you know, <laughs> these these are not ten thousand dollar games. But look, if someone wants to pay that money for them, uh, by all means, really? <laughs> hit me up. <laughs> um, but you know, they're. I mean, I've been pretty public in telling people how much they owe me. They owe me at least five and a half grand, and yeah. I'm not selling them for that. So, given their scarcity, so um, yeah, if people want them, they're going to pay a scarcity premium for them. Interesting. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm willing to part with them, but I'm not giving them away. So I, I uh, happened to watch a video um, just within the last two weeks since we last recorded. Uh, oh, yeah. And it was from a uh, an arcade owner, his perspective on pinball machines. Oh, okay. And uh, he's based in the Midwest. I don't know exactly where. Um, I want to say maybe like Wisconsin or something like that. But he was going through what his pins uh, earned. Now, this is an arcade that also features uh, video games, too. So it's not okay. just a pinball arcade only, but it's also, okay. you know, it's a mix. It's, and, yeah. Yeah. 
And he was talking about how he was just like, they are not profitable in the least. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And he was, he was mentioning how his top earner was Adam's family and that he'd only earned like $1,200 over the year on that. And his second place was like Ghostbusters. And that had earned him like just just shy of a thousand. And he goes, well, right. obviously, you know, when you think about how much these machines cost, um, he's like, it's going to take forever for Ghostbusters to, to be worth it. And isn't it sad that a 90s machine is out earning it? And I was kind of like, well, I mean, we're talking about a really spectacular game <laughs> that's out yeah. earning it and stuff. But what was interesting about his talk about operations, and he wasn't um, mentioning about maintenance. He wasn't talking about that. And he was saying how he really mm -hmm. loves pinball. Uh, but he said from an operation standpoint, you want to be able to earn back your machine's cost within a year. And these are going to take eight years. And that's really brutal. It says the flip side is that usually these pinball, the, the people that buy these machines, the new ones, um, that half the time the profit is in reselling it. <laughs> yes. So it's like absolutely they they make their profit and then they sell it for virtually what they paid for initially, and you know there's where your profit is. Um, he also was saying that since he's not a barcade. Uh, or I shouldn't say barcade is in terms of barcade brand, but you know an arcade with a bar inside of it. Um, he says that's detrimental to him. And what he was saying was that pinball do performs much better in bars, way mm -hmm. better than if the bar had had a video game in it, as opposed to the flip side, which is you have no bar, the video games do really well, the pinball doesn't. And he goes, it's this weird dynamic. He also said that there was another arcade, um, I wouldn't say necessarily in the area, but close enough to, you know, semi-call it competition, that buys all the brand new games. And he goes, right. I simply can't compete with them. He goes, they have the market cornered on that. And I was like, isn't that interesting things, you know, to talk about? And then he was even saying about how he's talked to other uh, pinball operators who their numbers are spectacular. And he, so he was like, I don't know, is it a regional thing? Is it, you know, the kind of location that you put it into? Um, is it your clientele? He goes, my busiest days are when I run tournaments. But he says the problem with the tournaments is that the guys that come to him are all people that own machines of their own at home. And so then they don't come for the other three weeks that he's not running a tournament. <laughs> yeah. So as far as a, an attractive um, proposition for the location, yeah. there's there's no repeat business from it. Right. See, it's different. I, I really think that if you're not operating a mixed business now with an arcade, mm -hmm. your your days are numbered. Um, you or, and this is the unfortunate flip side of it, you need to switch to entirely redemption to get people into the door. Mm. Um, I saw it when I went up to um, a regional town here in Queensland called Toowoomba and visited a pinball bar um, called Flipped. Great little bar. It's got a couple of beers on tap. They have a, a diner attached so you can get some basic food. Got a bank of about 12 pinballs, including a, a Guns N' Roses, new Guns N' Roses from JJP. Whole lot of classic games up there. You know, they had a mixture of people in there. They had a birthday party going. Um, they had um, just casual people like me and my mate up there just wanting to go and check it out and then you walk into this other like more traditional family entertainment center called iplay and it's just wall to wall of rubbish right in there there's there's probably if i was to count the number of actual games games not redemption games yeah. that they had there we would be talking one they had a like a maximum tune or whatever it's called the midnight v whatever it's called driving game they had a pretty clapped out Mario Kart arcade. Um, they had one pinball machine, which was a, a stern kiss. Um, fil it's filthy. Yeah. Absolutely filthy. You could make the ramp shots. You couldn't make the lock shot. I reported it um, to like in a, in a review and got a, like a, the typical response back from them. Like, they don't care. 
Like it's just it's gambling for kids these places. Yeah. Like it's well, and, it's a casino for kids. And, and I, oh, I saw just the most abhorrent behavior there of this family. They were on one of those coin pushes, oh, and yeah. they were just pumping pumping money in. the kids were the adults were i was disgusted at what i saw i really was i, I hadn't felt that gross in a venue like that for a while yeah and it just made me so uncomfortable to see just the outright gambling that was yeah. happening in this arcade it was horrible horrible to see i will also say that uh, another factor with pinball in a lot of places if your place isn't dedicated to pinball if you just happen to be having a couple of pinball machines. And what this guy was saying with his arcade, he goes, there is a non-tangible element with having pinball in his arcade. And that is, he said, pinball does drive business. Um, mm. He says, people throw a quarter in the pinball machine and then go spend a whole bunch of time on the arcades machines and then come back to the pinball. He goes, it, it kind of uh, draws people, but it doesn't draw them to play the pinball. And he said, the second factor that goes into that is he's had a lot of people, and he goes, even adults, they see the license, they walk up to it, and he says licensed pins do much better than non-licensed. Um, mm. But he says they walk up to it, they put the quarter in, he goes, and then they sit there and they, they'll they come to him and be like, hey, the machine ripped me off because they don't even know that you're supposed to push the start button. Um, and I then, see that all the time as well. Yeah, and then once they do yeah. push the start button, they have no clue what to do because he was like, there's all these mechanical things and obviously, you know, the lights, and if you don't, he goes, nobody wants to read the uh, apron, which I agree, no. I never read the apron. Um, you know, funny, it's absolutely true, right? I spent $20 US on instruction cards for Force 2 and Pink Panther. Yeah. And I still had people going, no, I, I didn't even know there was a multi ball on Pink Panther. Yeah. <laughs> like, read the instruction card. It's written right there on how you get multi ball. Like, Come on, instructions are for suckers. We, we yeah, don't want to right. read those. I just want to flip no it. time for those. I never, re- I, having said that, I never read the Zen instructions. Sorry no. to the Zen designers who take up the time running those. I never do. Well, you know around. what, too? Instruction cards, it was one thing in the 90s when most that of the rules could to... fit on the instruction card. But you look at a modern instruction card, and it's like, it's barely scratching the surface. It's it's hardly yeah, telling it's you anything. You, it, really, they just need to have a QR code on there <laughs> that you link off to. <laughs> right. Um, and, and go to the like long-form rule sheet. There should be like two versions, two QR codes. One for the, I just want to flip this and sort of get a little bit of a way into it and say... No, I'd like to stack modes and become like a pinball yeah. wizard. <laughs> the other thing yeah. I'll say is that and a lot of these arcades that uh, do have, you know, maybe three pinball machines, mm. odds are they're, a, yeah, like you said, a dirty mess, maybe a broken flipper, yeah. rubbers that aren't bouncy, they're not maintained, therefore the game's not fun, therefore nobody's playing it, and yet the operator will be like, oh, see, people don't like pinball. It's like, no, people want well-maintained yeah. running machines. They don't want to play a broken machine. It'd be the same thing of walking up to, you know, walking up to an old Street Fighter 2 and two of the buttons don't work. Well, a lot yeah. of fun that's going to be. You know? Well, exactly right. <laughs> or, yeah. or the screen I mean, is so burned in, you can barely tell, you know, what's what. What's going on on the screen. Yeah, yeah exactly. Do you know, um, the, the whole... Oh, I was going down a tangent there about... Um, maintenance and stuff like that um i've forgotten what it was but to get, as you were yeah as, as we were <laughs> i completely forgot it <laughs> uh, that's but that's why i think that a, an arcade that's doing nothing but brand new machines is going to do better because the person walking in knows they're going to be playing a machine that plays like it should as opposed to yeah. walking into a, an arcade that has you know two 1980s tables and one mid-90s table, and you just kind of immediately go, oh, something tells me these are not going to be well-maintained. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So. And, you know, operators, you talk to people like, you know, Jimmy and Ben who run Netherworld, and, you know, they they get the new tables in because, number one, that's what the customers want. Like, they want new tables. But also, like, they work. Yeah. For, for the most part, until a node board dies in one of the sterns. But, you know... It, for the most part, they work. They don't cause you too much trouble. All you need to do is do the regular maintenance on them, like changing, you know, flipper mechanics occasionally, um, just to keep the flippers well tuned. But for the most part, you know, you don't have board problems. You don't have things going down. Like yeah. the the gains are pretty stable, and you know, this got to hand it to Stern. Like they are getting the licenses that people want to play at the moment. So again, the curb appeal of the pinball machine is there. And people want to put money in it. But yeah. uh, this was the other thing too. I think um, 
uh, the cost per play of pinball is another big factor. Oh, sure. So I was, talk I was talking to people at BPAC this year that come down from Melbourne in Australia. And they're saying, look, you guys are, you don't know how lucky you are up here having dollar games still up here. Like put a dollar in, you get a, a credit. Like it's $2.50 down in Melbourne for a game now. $2.50. That's rough. So, so, and he was going to look, you know, a dollar, you have no problems just throwing the money in. And you probably get, you know, you probably get people doing multiple plays, but you put $2.50 as that as opening price for a game. And you, you think twice about putting your money into that. Yeah. So, this is another factor about, you know, operators going, oh, geez, I wonder why pinball isn't making any money. And look, I get that, you know, pinball machines now are at least $15,000 to buy, buy new in Australia. You do have to raise your price. And that's totally fair to expect that. But $2 is probably the right price if you want to actually. I've seen pinballs price at 2 bucks in like the larger family entertainment centers. And I think even that that kiss game that was clapped out in rubbish up at iPlay, um, that was, I think, $2 on swipe. So, you know, that's... It's, it's funny because, you know, back in my arcade days, the 90s, obviously, two bucks gave you five games on the pinball machine. <laughs> yeah. That's how many credits that was worth. <laughs> yeah, um, that's right. Yeah, so... Um, I know. <laughs> Uh, hmm. All right, let's let's uh, shift gears here. Uh, let's go to one of the topics that was on our title card there. So um, we apparently stepped in it. <laughs> oh yeah, we did. Um, we, we probably received the most comments and the most interaction on Blockade video ever with our last episode. About Which was sad because that was one episode that I wasn't there for the live chat on. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're talking the about... Uh, we had David from uh, Retroplade uh, come on here. Um, and the we were barraged with how dare yous and how could you possibly have this pariah on your show. Um, look, folks, as we've stated many times, as we stated in that show, we are not involved with the VPX community. We don't know what's going on in the VPX community. We don't know who your enemies are. All we know is what attracted our attention. 90% mm. um, of what we were talking about was his machines. Yeah. I don't... And here's my question that kind of goes out. Uh, does the VPX community have a problem with his machines? and what his builds are. Um, does the VPX community have any uh, VPN manufacturer that they actually like and support? Um, because by the sounds of some of the comments we were getting, the answer is no. <laughs> um, there's it's almost funny, this... I read in the comments, like the, the comments, one of the comments says, and you, you, you did have to read through the comments because some of them were very long. Um, but if you did read the comments, one person said that, look, they don't have any problem with uh, David's cabinet builds. Um, they do have a problem with him putting uh, the VPN uh, tables software preloaded on there. That was their right point that they were making. Yes. So, um, yeah. So they, I, I don't think any anyone in the VPX community has an issue with cabinet builders building cabinets for people. I mean. There's a lot of people out there in the community that would prefer people to, you know, do the work themselves. And, you know, one person made the point that um, if you build your own cabinet, you can upgrade it and incrementally, imp incrementally improve it as you go on, which is a valid point. But I'll say this, I don't have time to do that. <laughs> so if, if I would like to in incrementally improve, like I'm flat out actually getting around to doing my real pinball machines and getting those service, you know, yeah. Australian dollar prices aside. Um, so for me building a, a cabinet from scratch, I mean, Zen, Zen did it recently on the stream, right? They built one. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, it took them a long time. Uh, so if you don't have the time to do that, then this is where these companies come in. They just get you a, like a cabinet that's built. It's got good hardware in it. It's got all the interface boards in it that you know, are already readily available that you'd be using anyhow. And your job's done, you plug it in, and you turn it on, and off you go. Yeah. Now, um, um, but so anyway, yeah. if, if for people that are wondering how dare we, well, that's why we dared. 
because yeah, to us it was the same. we've had we you know we also had uh, um, I'm forgetting his name. I want to say Greg, but I'm not sure if that's it. Uh, from VP Cabs on also. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, we did. Ages ago, but yeah. ages ago, but you know, we're willing to talk to, and we've, you know, we've talked to our CUDA. Not that anything's come of it in terms of a machine, no. but, um, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, we're happy to talk to these cabinet builders. Uh, yeah. As far as so, the other comments, and you touched upon it, Jared, um, mm. had to do with uh, preloading these with tables that. Uh, a source from the community. Yeah, that are sourced from the community. Mm -hmm. And yes, that is where there is for sure a problem. Um, I don't agree with being able to buy a hard drive that just happens to have all these tables on them because we all know that's the old, uh, oh, you're buying a flash drive and it just happens to have all these movies on it too. Um, oops. Yeah, that's right. You know, that's, mm -hmm. a, that, that's definitely a shady practice right there. Um, but that wasn't necessarily what the comments were talking about either. The comments did not like the idea of David's store and how it was making it easy to download all of these things. They felt that he was taking some of their intellectual property. Uh, yeah. To which I again, kind of, there's where I just kind of went, well, are you selling your intellectual property? Um, have you copyrighted your intellectual property? Or are you merely angry that somebody made it so that they don't have to visit all these websites in order to download this stuff that is free to anybody, you know, freely available, I should say, to anybody to, mm. to grab? Um, we did ask, uh, we, we uh, sent a message to David just to ask, uh, and he did say that authors and stuff are credited within his store. Um, mm. So at least author credit is going there. But then the comment was, yes, but some of these authors only upload to specific sites. To which, again, I go, well, why is that? Uh, is there something about these sites that the author specifically only wanted to be there? Uh, you know, How were they profiting off it was off? Uh, an issue of control. Right. Like they want to be able to control how these files are actually... Uh, obtained as hosted and then made available to people to um, what extent again i'm i'm curious about now uh we did comment that hey uh if anybody wants to come and talk about this we'll uh you know we'll, enter we'll entertain that we did have a response um i've just been slammed busy haven't had a chance to uh, respond to that haven't had a chance to mm -hmm. uh uh, you know, set up an episode where we can do that. And we're still interested in doing exactly that. Um, yeah. I'll also point out there is a really good article that just got posted up on This Week in Pinball uh, from some VPX developers that breaks down exactly how and what goes into uh, making one of these tables. Um, look, it is, it's a lot of slog work. There's no doubt about it. Um, yeah. A lot of effort goes into it and I think everybody appreciates that effort that goes into it. But it does come off interesting just in terms of um, when it comes to fair use. Let's put it to you that way. Uh, mm. Being able to use licensed copyrighted material, IPs, that do not belong to them simply because they're stating, well, we're not profiting off of them. Um, yeah... You're not profiting off of them necessarily, but that doesn't mean you have ownership over them either, as far as I know. So I wanted to uh, specifically read something here that they posted within the uh, that Twitch or tw Twitch that Twip article. Um, so, for instance, this is uh, they're talking about how they actually uh, contacted uh, one of the developers of total nuclear annihilation and got his permission got many files yeah. sent to them to recreate tna uh as a digital file which is that's the appropriate way to go about things to secure yeah, absolutely yeah to s secure permission from the ip which is fantastic but then they and i'll quote this directly it says however we try to make this work for everyone and stick to fair use doctrine as close as possible Fair use doctrine is a whole other subject. <laughs> mm. um, 
And as you guys know, we love talking licensing here. We've had many, 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 many discussions with many, many different people. Um, we feel we have a decent grasp on it, but obviously we don't know the legal ins and outs. Um, no, because we are not lawyers. No, obviously. but we've reached out to some of the people that we've contacted in the past about licensing. Just, you know, we feel we understand uh, certain things. Uh, anyway, continuing. Uh, for example, we don't recreate games that are still in production by the manufacturer. Okay. So in other words, they're not trying to compete directly with Stern or JJP or Spooky well, as soon as the table comes out. Um, yeah. They're going to wait until they've you know put it in the vault, stop making it, and then they're going to come out with their recreation. Um, yeah. And we're convinced that playing a good recreation is like a gateway drug. Now you, you'll, Now you really want to play the real thing. Look, me and Jaron can attest to this. Neither Absolutely. Of us, neither of us owned a machine until we were playing uh, Pinball Arcade. That yeah. totally got us wanting to have our own machines. So, yes, it, yeah. it can be a gateway drug, for sure. For um, sure, yeah. <laughs> um, the assertion is backed by dozens of community managers who got into Pinball on their PC and now on one. Or, mul or multiple real machines. Um, there are also commercial studios producing digital pinball games, such as Zen, with their Pinball Effects series. We have a good relationship with them. So do we. Um, yeah. For example, they are supporting virtual pinball players by providing features for our cabinets and such as Portrait View. Yes, absolutely they are. Um, and the support goes both ways. In the past, we've relicensed the PinBAME source code when possible to allow for its commercial usage. Now, the assumption there is that it's basically saying that uh, this has been done for Zen. Jared, I think you agree with me. Our assertion is that was what was done for Farsight. Yeah, we know for a fact that Farsight um, did engage with uh, the pin main um, designers right. uh, and maintainers to actually get their engine license in a way they could use it commercially because it, it needed the license that was originally attached to the pin main did not allow them to do that and so they broke it a deal to do that so that's that's right. true but i don't know of any such agreement with zen right so it's, a, it's kind of implied but i don't know exactly if that is the case or not um if and somebody absolutely 100 know. percent knows this to be truth then feel free to message us and let us know that so that we can uh, yeah. uh, you know, include that in our thought processes here. Um, but when it comes to, when it comes to IPs folks, there's a reason why everybody's so skittish about all this. And that's because yeah. it's, you are using an IP that you don't have permission to use. Um, and when it comes to digital pinball, the amount of money that Farsight paid, the amount of money that Zen is currently paying to license all the Williams and Bally tables is not chump change in the least. And I hate no. to say it, but these free tables, digital tables, are in direct competition with Zen. Now, you may say, no, that's not true. That's not true. We have heard multiple times when we talk about a, you know, a new table that's coming out for pinball effects that is a Williams or Bally table. And people go, eh, it's utter crap. I'll, I'll just stick to VPX. Well, that's competition, isn't it? And you yeah. can hide behind fair use all you want, but the truth is you're still directly in competition. Um, yeah. And I would, I surmise that the only reason why uh, those VPX tables are getting away with it is because it's not a big enough dent to cause scientific games to perk up their ears and go, Hey, wait a second. Cause they've got all their casino business that they're running also. You know what I mean? That's right. It's a little bit like if you're talking about, you know, people going against using a license and not using the license and not paying for it. It's a little bit like, I imagine, you know, if you use a shopping analogy, someone, you know, stealing a, a roll of lifesavers from a shop, versus someone taking the cash register and walking out the shop with it. Um, it's still technically classed as, um, you know, you're taking IPs that aren't theirs and using them. But yeah, it's not a big enough deal. Yeah, to go and, and I can even state this with regards to, uh, there is a, 
it was this fabled screening. Uh, I, I believe it was the actor Topher Grace re-edited all three Star Wars prequels into one movie. Mm-hmm. Um, into a two and a half hour long movie. Everybody that saw it raved, said it was amazing. Uh, such a great condensation or, or condensing of, of everything. Uh, made them all enjoyable. That thing is not available anywhere. He has mm-hmm. kept it under lock and key. He will only... Uh, he'll do free screenings for friends and stuff like that. But he even said, he, he basically was like, yeah, I let Lucasfilm know about it and they let me know in no uncertain terms uh, that that thing better not ever see the light of day beyond who he shows it to. So it better mm-hmm. not be passed around and screened and all of a sudden be widely available on the internet. Um, yeah. Because Otherwise then they're going be to problems. have an issue. Yeah. Yes. So... That's what I relate this all to in terms of the IP that, you know, with these tables. And, you know, a lot of these VPX uh, dev- uh, authors, they create their own original table. So they're not doing a Williams or a Bally uh, right. ripoff. But and those are the ones that seem to be quite available through, like, when we were entertaining the idea of, like, we were saying it's hard to get tables for VPX. Yeah. And one of the commenters in, our, in the YouTube said, look, it's not you install Pinup Popper and you can download the games directly from Pinup Popper. But, and again, I have not done this, yeah. so I can't really equivocally say this is the case. But I would imagine those are not Belly Williams tables. Those are recreations of EMs, um, own creations that table developers have, have made themselves. Yeah. Um, you know, with a mixture of... <laughs> arguably material that could be considered, you know, um, copyrighted. Well, and I was just going to say, you know, one of the original oh. tables that I remember playing was a Wallace and Gromit table. It was fantastic. It had sound clips. Um, the artwork yeah. was fantastic, but he didn't own the Wallace and Gromit IP. <laughs> no. You know, and I doubt that he'd gotten permission to use it. Um, so that's that's where it ultimately comes down to. Hey, if you want to create your own IP... Um, and copyright that, then I feel that you have every claim in the world to say, hey, I don't want my material being distributed where I didn't say it. And you have every right to do that because you created it. Well, now you know how the uh, original IP holders feel. Um, and even though these people are saying within the VPX community that you know they have reached out and contacted certain IP, something tells me they've not reached out to any of the major studios and asked for their permission with movie licenses. Something tells me they have not reached out to scientific games. Um, and why do I know that? Because Zen has an exclusive license on all things Williams and Bally. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I'm um, sure those aren't available through pinup pop up. Yeah. So that's why it, it's, 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 it's a little weird to me and Jared to be inundated with how dare you's when we can turn the finger right around and be like, well, how dare you? <laughs> um, yeah, you know where do you, you're you're claiming fair use doctrine, but on the other hand, you also know that you're skirting a very razor thin margin of what you can get away with and what you can't. Um, and fair use really isn't a loophole. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's only fair use until you get caught. I yeah. think it's the uh, it's the rule. So let's hope that never happens. Because circling back to the original, the original like sort of introductory part to this thing like the work that the vpx community does is quite incredible oh, like that's amazing. the the creations and the hard work that people put into not only the table recreations but let's not forget the actual engine that powers oh yeah again read that thing. read that twip article and it's it's mind-blowing the amount of hours you it, know are spent doing this it really is like, like it's it's staggering and i know community-led projects like this are only possible because of the passion of the community that's behind yep. them. So we're not suggesting at all that, you know, that shouldn't be considered. It's just that when we're talking about, you know, the the issues of licensing, that that's where it gets a little bit yeah. um, prickly. And, and I, and I think we both feel the same way. Uh, Look, the argument of, look, we're preserving pinball history for machines that are very hard to come by, have long since been, you know, dust that, you know, people haven't seen in years and years and years. 
look, I fully understand, and I, I, I love that sentiment. I really do. Um, we all say Zen can't produce tables fast enough. Uh, Farsight couldn't produce tables fast enough. We love, you know, because we've seen the VPX community where virtually every table already has been recreated in one form or another, um, yeah. it's a little bit hard to take that step back and go, well, now we're back to only having 20 available, you know, you know when it first started. Um, yeah. But that's where you there is that factor of you kind of have to respect, again, those IPs. Um, so I don't know. It's, it's a weird discussion. It's one that uh, we were worried about as soon as those comments started flowing in. We were like, uh oh, what have we done? But again, you got to cut us a little bit of slack. Um, we don't know your community. So that's why, that's how you, that's how we, why we dared. Um, <laughs> uh, again, you want to communicate to us who in the cabinet world we should be talking to instead? Let us know, you know, who, yeah, is, like, who, who is it that who, are here? Who is it that is a champion, you know, championed by the VPX community that uh, is doing it yeah. right by you guys? Um, yeah. Which commercial pinball cabinet manufacturer is doing the right thing? Yes. Like tell us, tell us, and then we'll talk to them. To. Um, yeah. All we were pointing out was this was something that finally got us interested in VPX. It solved the problem. To solve the problem that we felt that we were having. Yeah. 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 And that's like, Purely from, and this is a classic example of, you know, folks like us who were, you know, from the VPX side of things, quite naive coming into it going, wow, this is a problem that we've already felt, we always felt was a problem. We don't know anything else um, about the matter. So this solves a problem. Let's talk about it. Yeah. You know, and that was the whole point of that thing. The fact that it evolved into something else was in itself good. In the fact that it's it's like the conversation that we had in that video and the discord that we had sometimes it was pretty heated but like once we got down to me asking the right questions about so help us understand what's going on here we started to get some really good discord going on in the comments there so i thank people who, who took a step back and and talked about this more rationally with us in in the comments because that was really interesting and then yeah. I just wonder if this if this article on Twip was a result in part of that to sort of right. shine a light more on what the VPX community actually does and how they bring tables to life. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I mean, that's that's great. I, I very much, I'm sure it's not the reason why that article exists, but. but... <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that I, obviously I've written articles for uh, This Week in Pinball also, and uh, I let Jeff know there that because uh, he had asked me to write something about VPX, and I just said straight out, I go, I don't know anything about it. Um, you don't want me writing an article about it because it'll be completely naive and simplistic and exactly the kind of article I hate. So yeah. uh, I'm glad somebody else finally stepped up and wrote exactly that kind of thing. Um, and hopefully we didn't just like kick the hornet's nest again because that's not our intention. Oh, I'm sure we did. <laughs> I'm sure we did. It's not our but intention. So we it. just want to, we basically want to point out that there's a whole other side to it community that um, uh, is an elephant in the room that you all know about. So mm. consider that too. <laughs> yeah, I'm um, sure we're gonna get comments, but probably whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll 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 work on having uh, some people actually come on and uh, maybe yeah, we yeah. can we'll... have a sane discussion. We don't want to be uh, uh, we like to play devil's advocate now and then, um, but we also don't want to be just like those guys. <laughs> mm. So, hey, uh, let's let's shift gears here. Mm. We're gonna go into a little bit of a, of a let's play, shall we? Let's play. Let's, let's play. play a thing. So uh, Zen mm. came out with a new original table. And I think me and Jared both agree that uh, it, it's tickling the uh, the sensibilities that we've been asking Zen to do for some time. <laughs> oh yeah, there, there's got a lot of boxes ticked in this particular one. Yeah, so um, let's uh, let's dive right into this thing. We're going to be playing uh, Grim Tales. Yeah, this is a, a brand new table. Um, by one of the, it's a new developer. Yes, this is, uh, yeah, Zoltan Pazo Pataki. He is our, uh... Another uh, Zoltan. 
Another Travis Zoltan. Zoltan, Zoltan I, I looked it up. Sick. Apparently, Zoltan is a, a very popular name. <laughs> Wait, what's going on? Why is it? Unknown oh, no, air. Oh, my goodness. Let's try this again. Air. Air or what? Air or what? Oh, I noticed all your tables are right now. Action. Hold on, Jared. I'm going to get out of this right. real quick because apparently something has has happened. Uh, your internet is, is gone. Well, you know, I had this uh, all set up for quite a while here. and Yeah, we were talking about we stuff. We were talking it's about stuff. Fault. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I'm Normally gonna... we do, do playthroughs <laughs> as the only point in the show, but there was a little bit of other stuff we need to talk about in the show. Yeah. So I'm going to... I'm gonna... Um, hold on. Uh, just ignore the man behind the curtain. <laughs> Right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put me up on screen just so you can feel my struggle. Um, yeah, the struggle is real trying to get things set up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get this thing up yeah, and yeah. running properly. Uh, that was kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. I probably timed out with, with a word. Oh yeah, that, yeah, you probably would have. Yeah. No, the Grim Tales they've they've done a good job. We I mean, could talk about the high points in it and then show yeah. the high points, but you know, there's informative insert lighting there's call outs about shots oh, now finally this the, the first that we've time. been asking for yeah it's even it's amazing. In the, even like, in the dmd or the, the video screen i should say um yeah it's telling you in spine print what ramps to shoot for <laughs> yeah and it's always there on the screen so you, you never go oh gee what, what what do i need to shoot for right it's there and it's just it's meant that this game I think out of all the Zen originals is by far my favorite. No, oh, wow. Um, it, it's by far, it beats anything else out there because it actually feels like a real commercial game machine. There um, we go. Now it's going to run. Hey, gonna, look, look at, at that. that. I'm so thankful. Look at the play field they, view. Right. They, they put play field art up. They got a back glass going on. It's like, thank you. Look at that. That looks like a machine that you would actually see in the arcade. Yes. And right. I know that they've been doing that recently uh, with their yes. stuff. I'm, and it's just one of those things I've got to keep on applauding them for that. Because um, they don't have to technically. No. But the fact that there's a room a room for this, I still really wish they'd apply the same room um, to all the Belly Williams tables. Like, the, I really wish we had just the room, not the, 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 the Williams casino. Right. <laughs> But anyhow, here we are. There we go. Um, Grim Tales. So we've got a. Um, time, I did notice one thing that's like the, uh, the Grim Tales like very helpful. Go, Grave um, Knight. Doesn't Save really Hamlet. Work for some views. Little Red Riding Hood. It actually obscures the well, little bit. Right? If we look at it, because I was trying to see who the designer was, and it it blocks the designer. <laughs> Yeah, Jocks it's like, close the, book. the artwork. But hey, you go over here, at least you can see the additional artwork and the character artist. Um, That's right. They, they, you need to be able to close the book and the move it elsewhere. Well, yeah. you know what would be really good is if... Oh, no. Yeah, I guess you, it wouldn't work that way. But, I mean, you could, you could have the book um, open up to the left of the table, but then it sort of breaks the illusion of the book being integrated as part of the life on the glass. But... Um, yeah, it would be good to like, maybe, I don't know, <laughs> make the, the book transparent if you zoom in close enough or something like that. Or at least, Help you know, close at some point. Or, or just put the put, put, so the table designer information some somewhere else. Right. Um, but, so, uh, yeah. speaking of, uh, of, I'm just going to call him Pazzi, or Pazzo, excuse me, because, again, this this now marks the third Zoltan that uh, Zen has. Or has had yeah. as a designer. We can't keep calling everyone John, John, no. because there's too many Johns, right? Um, but <laughs> I was, uh, before I could tell who this was, I was like, this feels like a deep table. I was going to say, I, I thought it was deep for sure, because then I saw DP in the high school table, and I thought, oh, it's a deep table, because it feels like one. Yeah, it's like, got it's that gone. very bouncy feel. Uh, the ball is very wild. Um, yeah. The layout feels kind of similar to this kind of things that he does. It's so. totally a medieval madness, that's for sure. Like, it's got a little it's, medieval, it's big, for sure. Big, big fan layout, basically. Right um, like even the the drop target, uh, the pop bumper area is in the, the same position as um, medieval madness and, and attack from Mars. You got a big bash toy in the middle. Um, that being said, that the, the upper flay field with those flippers is nothing of the sort. <laughs> well, no, that's that's true. Um, but you know, it's, um, I really like the, the layout of the, 
the game. I love the theme integration in this. Yeah, right there like we've it. got a little bit with the uh, little uh, theater of magic mirror action. Yeah, I actually that, that's exactly what I thought when I saw it. I went, oh, it's, it's theater. How of are magic. you at hitting this shot, Jared? Because I suck. Oh, rubbish. <laughs> yeah, rubbish <laughs> at it. Um, absolutely terrible. Uh, they, there needs to be more of a warning uh, or an audio cue for when that uh, ball is going to release. Yeah, that's um, exactly right. Because like, it needs is... to be. Is there? I forget. Is there like a mechanical Ugh. sort of eject noise that happens when? It that is, but it's not. Just, it's like there's still a pause after it. I, it, it. I'm having a really hard time getting the timing on it. Pick One thing that one. Belly Williams tables do good. Look, look at the strobing like flasher. It goes blink, 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 blink. And then it's, but, you know, I hit it, but it's, it's such a narrow window for hitting. I'm going to try something else, see if I get that shot up again. And that is, I'm going to change the view. Mm, okay. Because I'm so playing view the, two. And that's pretty far away. So you want to see if, like, changing your view is one where it zooms in. Because it worked on, uh, what table did that work on? I want to say Mandalorian, but I don't think that was the one I was thinking of. Pick up flowers. Okay, hold on. See if this works. View one. That won't work. Very nope, well. it didn't. <laughs> view one won't work. It'll it need to be like view four or view five that zooms in and follows the ball okay. around. Oh no, why really the ball is visible? Uh, because there's one of the, you're in a mode where um, the the witch has enchanted the ball and like plays tricks on you to uh, try and make you lose the ball. That didn't so work. So I'll say this. Um, I'll say this. It's it's a lot better playing this particular table with ball trails on for that very reason because um, you at least see the shadow of the ball go, like zooming around the paper and you can track it so mirror. that's a bit of a hack i found in playing this game it's uh yeah ball trails can be useful in this i hate ball table. trails though <laughs> yeah well i hate not being able to see the ball more True. um so uh like you know that's one of the things i turn off instantly in theater of magic that yeah but see in theater thing. of magic it's a false mode Whereas this, it's obviously integrated in. Yeah, it's designed to be part of the game. Right. It's, Theater of Magic, but... I always felt, was like, why would I dare hamper my play for false difficulty? Yeah, which wasn't in the original game or wasn't intended to be in the right. original game. Um, so you'll um, notice the, the flashing light right there to the left of the uh, the castle. That there would be yeah. basically your mode start. Yeah, which I, I will admit was a little bit hard to work out initially but you get you find out pretty quickly uh, i'll just say yeah, i'm, I'm like have not played this game hardly at all so <laughs> yeah <laughs> there, there's not gonna be world record attempt here yeah. that, uh, when no. the game is played. but one thing i really really enjoyed with this game is when you get into multiple which is incredibly fun by the way the multiple in this game is is a blast to play Skill but shoot. when you're going for like double jackpot and super jackpot you, you get to use the, the upper playfield flippers um to do that and uh there's some massive points available um in those two um, rounds so you when you're going for double jackpot you use the upper left flipper there to shoot just behind the castle and it goes to that upper right flipper there which you probably wouldn't even realize was there until you start flipping it yeah um because it doesn't it doesn't really stand out but you once you're there you go oh that flipper then leads you into a super jackpot shot um and it's incredibly satisfying when you nail it for the first time um when the girl so yeah the way they've done those upper two flippers that they're limited use but when you use them it feels really good to flip it up there so, um, uh, yeah, I quite like that feature. That's impossible! I've got a timer going on. What am I? Destroy the rose bushes. Where are the. Oh, those are the rose bushes. Yeah, the two flashing lights. Yeah, I'll get them. I'll get them. Not those two. No. Oh. Not those two. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm, I'm looking. It's a really tight shot up there, too. That's yeah, one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's real tight. I love the uh, spinners and they sort of make butterflies as well. Like it's just, they've really gone. Th this is a good example, I think, of using the digital effects in the game Shoot mm -hmm. left or to really enhance the gameplay. Like we're not talking about characters jumping around the screen like a lot of Belly Williams ones. This is really tight integration um, and just subtle 
the thing. Like, uh, I really, good shot. Um, really, ah, oh, that'd be right. Um, yeah, I really like around the back there where you see the the mirror, the, all the like the fireflies flying around and sort of like, yeah, you know, just pushing around. It's like it really does feel like an enchanted forest. Really nice is, use of lighting. It feels like a really room. nice. Um, yeah. You know, have a look the, at the um... the inserts are very noticeable. Like right now, we see flashing or Sleeping Beauty is flashing, um, which you know, rather than just generic uh, graphic images or whatever, it's like I appreciate being able to read what it is that I'm mode I'm playing in. Yeah. Um, no! Oh man, I only had one rosebush to smash left. Is that game over? Nope, I still got more. Okay. Um, so by the looks of it, the the tail continues even after. It does, yeah. So you continue where you left off. So you don't die um, immediately like you often do on like the actual games in the arcade, which is good. Um, it's I think it's it's good that you also don't get trapped in mode hell as well, mode purgatory. So sometimes in these games where you continue your mode ball to ball, um, you've got to finish the mode. Um, in order to progress, but unless you do, nothing else is available on the table. Like, yeah. you can't go for multi-ball, you can't do anything, it's just no, do the no, mode or no. do nothing. Uh, they haven't done that, though, that in Grimm's Tales, you can actually do other things with shot. Um, princess, so, love. now you can they lock the ball in the castle, after. it's blinking, see how it's Shoot like a really castle. nice apparent flash, just in the, um, the, the castle gate. Yeah. So, there we go. There you go. Balls, one, one of seven, seven? balls. Holy crap. One of seven <laughs> balls. So, so you basically got to complete oh, all um, seven modes. All seven modes to get the wizard mode, I think. And see how there's now a ball floating in the, the castle. It's actually locked up in there. Um, oh yeah. Hovering in one of the windows. Yeah, so that's and that's basically indicating um, how many modes you completed. Now I don't know if you need to complete the modes all together to actually get like um, an achievement or like a progress towards the wizard mode um but i have a feeling that because they let you continue ball to ball you actually do so you need to shoot the shots complete all the lit shots and then qualify in the castle to actually get um one of those modes so i'll just point done. out there right there i was not sure where to shoot and it said shoot the left orb and i was like shoot thank you i don't know exactly what that did for me but it was like that's the kind of call out that i like because I yeah. literally was starting to, I was looking around the table going, well, I see a flashing thing, you know, to a captured ball there at the uh, gingerbread house. I'm not sure what that's doing. I'm not quite sure exactly how to be able to start a new mode. Um, but You know what I think it is? I hmm. think it actually, if you haven't shot a, um, a, a required shot for a certain amount of seconds, that's when you get... A shoot here prompt. Oh, okay. So I actually think it's actually after a certain number of seconds that the game tries to help you out. Um, Which is good so for a theme like again, this because this is obviously another theme that is uh, going to be aimed at all ages. Um, yeah. Which you can tell by the by the music and uh, the sound effects and stuff that it's you know not meant to be totally evil, grim fairy tales. You know. Um, yeah, that's right. Which let's be serious, Grim, Grim Tales are not, you know, <laughs> not the most pleasant dark. tales. Yeah, <laughs> they're, pre they're pretty dark. Like the the real ones, the ones that aren't Disneyfied, um, they're they're hardcore. So yeah, it's good that they sort of went for the softer approach here to make it a little bit more accessible. Right. Um, as you can see there, like you, know, you do flip the tricks quite nicely in this table. Like it actually, the geometry is such that it's like a real table. Oh, that was close. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you really shat past that one. <laughs> when the prince had a oh, nice. Princess, the they All right, what am I hitting now? The castle. And they lived happily ever yeah. after. There we go. That's right. I'm, I'm getting better. Open. Just, to, just you, in this limited amount there. of time. Yeah, that's right. Get some multipliers going. There we go. And this is the other thing I like. Ow! Yes! Those slingshots are brutal. <laughs> they are. They're very, very tight slingshots, which again makes the ball feel wild and makes it quite hard. Now, we're playing on, on classic mode at the moment. It'd be interesting to play as an arcade with rewind and all the different power ups and see oh, right. what that's like. Because I often find that, you know, you play, play it on the 
the classic marionettes a bit of a different feel. Um, but I haven't done that yet. I had the goatlings from the wolf. Oh, I see the goatlings. Oh, hey, that's new. I haven't seen this mode. That's cool. It's like a duck mode. We, we do like the paper cutouts in, in <laughs> games. It's paper cutouts mode. It's gotta be. It's, there's gotta be a wolf. There's a wolf. Yeah, so I'm wondering if it's that. don't hit the wolf. Or hit the wolf. Or do you have to? It's, uh, well, it's saying it's hide the. the it's saying hit the goats on the. On hit the, the goats. Sorry, well, hit the goats, Chris. Chris, hit the goats. Okay, I'm trying. Give me a break. <laughs> See, I can As everyone will know, like we, we, I don't get any sound, so I'm just basically. Um, uh, Let me just in. Make my own noise. It's good. There we go. Adding value to the show because I can't hear. Oh, anything. now I get to hit the wolf. Yay. Oh, nice shot. The goatlings let in the wolf, lock the ball. And there you go, castle's yeah. open again. Then they lived happily ever after. Get it in there. Tail Get is it complete. in there. If I can hit this dead center shot that, well, that did something. Oh, that's a well, different kind of ball. Got, we, well, fair enough. I mean, you needed that anyhow, so yeah. why not do it now? Oh, yeah, nice use of the dead bounce. There we go. Oh, there we go. Look, now you got two balls in the castle. Hooray! That's good. Now what? I know, right? Now, how do you qualify mode? Do you have to shoot the captured ball to get the mode? I don't know. I, I hit it one time, and it didn't do anything for me. Um, I think you've got to hit that captured ball to relight the mode. That's a, that would be a good thing. It's a brutal shot to try and do, but right now I'm going to go for that it's blinking a, middle castle shot. Board. Yeah, shoot the flashing shot. Ah. You can do it. Okay, hey, I didn't hit that. you got to shoot that two more times. No, you did. You got to. Oh. It tells you. Oh, seven more to destroy the castle shot. gate. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Shoot the mirror. Now you can shoot. There we go. Crystal multi ball. Okay, we're saying something about shooting the mirror. Shoot Ooh, right hey, hello. Yeah, you got crystal multi ball. Like it does what it says in the box. See? Yo, way to drain. Everyone to the clubhouse. <laughs> 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 is that what we're calling it? Oh, look. We That's what it's called, yeah. Everyone to the clubhouse. That's where all the balls drain at once. Uh, apparently, I've got two balls locked. I need to lock this third one again, I imagine. Oh, look. It's the dragon flying around. <laughs> <laughs> flying around really quick. Yeah, she is. She's really zooming around. She's I'm going to try and get that Twitch. ramp and see why it's flashing like crazy. Ugh. Oh, 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 good juggle. Yeah, you gotta shoot the shot. Oh, you missed it. Yeah, you gotta trap up on the. On no. the yeah, okay. Yep. Well, so much uh, for that. Yeah, dip. <laughs> you missed everything. You did miss everything. <laughs> that, was, that was ugly. So, the, the, what I do with that, again, obviously, the best thing you can do here is try and trap up and uh, get your balls down to two balls. So, you trap off on the left, shoot. Oh, sorry, trap off on the right and shoot with the, the lift up that ramp. Uh, and no. then down and... Yeah, I'm going to so yeah, the idea is to shoot it when it's flashing like you did, shoot like you tried to do. But Go then when it's up the top, you've got to shoot Camomile. the Skill flashing shot. shot to get the double jackpot. And then that carries it over to the left up the flipper, where you can have a, an attempt at um, super jackpot. Did I say double before? I, I meant double, then super. Um, so yeah, and you can keep doing that over and over again if you trap up and juggle your balls, which is what I was doing on a game on the um, press right. release version. I think I've got like about 150 million on the thing, but of course that won't reflect in any of the scoreboards because I did that in the press version. Um, well, but I know what to do now, so I just have to do it again. Now, see, see, you hit the the gingerbread house, and now your mode start. No, the mode start was already lit. Oh right, I didn't yep. see that. It was already lit. I'm, someone, I'm sure to... someone in the comments, probably for more views, will tell us how to. Uh, <laughs> uh, God forbid we look at the rules. The evil <laughs> oh, who, who has time to look at the rules? <laughs> Where's the fun in that? <laughs> As we were just saying. <laughs> As we were just saying. Yeah, and all the Zen rules rise going. <laughs> Curse you, Clark A. <laughs> Shakes angry fists free. There we go. Locked another ball. Yeah, well, that's not what I gotta yeah, hit. Yeah. I gotta hit these orbits. Which... Oh, hang on. There's T A L E. So, there's L E. 
no. stand up. Yeah, there's an A T A L E. So that's what you hurry, use to like the, the mode of stand up targets. Yeah, quit telling me to hurry. I'm trying to. Okay. Oh my god. Oh yeah, you got a loop. That's totally what it is. So look for the other, wherever the T target is. I don't think it's I um probably did well left. for Rapunzel Shoot there. Right orbit. Uh, Rapunzel, Rapunzel did not let down her hand for you. Yeah, it, definitely there's A, L, E, so there must be a T target floating around. That's how you light um, the mode. I think. Oh, so it would be the other stand up on the other side. Shoot the yeah, mirror. that's right. Right next to the A. Oh, okay, is there one to the very left there? Is left there? I just can't quite see it. Yeah. Instead of the... Shoot left orbit. And then I shoot a ramp instead. Shoot the death star. Alright, tail's lit and there it goes, right yeah. Ramp. Yeah, that's shoot exactly right. Your, your, that's how you light your um, your mode. There's a captive ball? No, it was the uh, uh, hit and the T. Because you, uh, I already had the, oh, yeah. the L and the E done. I can't see the T. Could you... um? Where is the T target? Oh, it's right there. I see. Yeah, yeah, it's right next to it. Yeah, right. I couldn't see because it wasn't lit up. Yeah. So there's like two. There's a group of two stand-up targets, T A, and then L E to the left of each ramp, and that's what you hit to start the mode. There you go. You learned something today. Who needs the rules? Well, and again, it sh there are certain things that should be fairly obvious. If you know a little bit about pinball, you should be able to figure things out. And that's the thing that's good about this game. Like it does, it does conform to pinball lore in the fact that it, it's you know easy to light things, and you shouldn't really have to to, to play a game. You shouldn't have to first Pick consult the flowers. rules first. It you should be able to just go and oh, we go. oh I actually flowers. got it. Nice shot. <sighs> oh, see, there's the timing issue again, right? I was like, oh, there's a freaky light, so you want to flick it. Yeah, you know. but at least like there is a Shoot there is the a mirror. strobing light. The but you know, think of how Belly Williams uh, tables do that. Like on White Water, for example, when it's in, when you go to the whirlpool and it goes to that yeah. eject hole down there, the flippers it's like, and it like ascends to the point where you know as soon as it hits that crescendo, that's when it's going to eject. Yeah. So this would be the only point that I could say um, for Zen designers moving forward. Put those sort of cues in the game as well. So there's a consistent noise, or there's a consistent tone, um, or there's like, you know, on three bings, like bing, 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 eject, you know, like bing, 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 eject. So you, you can time it right. Um, that will be a real handy um, addition. So I wanted to show uh, Brad a pinbot since that's the other new thing that's been out recently. We didn't get a chance to do this. Um, yeah. This thing looks gorgeous. Oh, doesn't it? Uh, especially when you compare to the Pinball Arcade version, which had a lot of low-res textures on it. Yeah. Um, the integration that Zen did with the uh, enhanced visuals is spot on. Um, yeah. It's really nice. I would love that ride over there. Yeah. I would want to. I would love to see a bigger version of that model. Like, well, I'll just point this out. I have the um, Williams enhancement turned off uh, in terms of zooming in, so it yeah. does actually zoom in on her. Uh, yeah. If you have that on, I just don't like that effect. Yeah, it breaks the illusion. It does. Um, but the, see that feed from that right that right loop. Do that feed again and trap the ball to the so for the right loop. The the right loop. You know, where the white flashing 25k is. Oh, yeah, no, next oh to the, two, the 25k. Okay, I'll try that. Yeah, the one that lights the jackpot. All right. Basically. Nah. I'll get there. Don't worry. Third time's a charm. Now, trap. Mm. See how it returns to there? Yeah. And it, like, it comes with dead stop? Yeah. Never seen any table do that in real life. Mm. Like, it never comes and drops right back there. It's oh, that does do it. Just an interesting... Like it, over and it over like again. falls into a pocket almost. It's it's literally like there's a magnet there and it, yeah. it stops it, which is not how the real table functions. Put my nerd glasses on and say it's not how it really happened. Well, <laughs> not on any of the tables that I've played, including the one at the pack. 
that I've played recently. It does not feed back to that point. Yeah, because it really does it feel like it's like just like gluing itself. Yeah, like you don't even need to catch it. You no. just have a good strong so shot in there and it'll go back straight yeah. there. Just above the, the, the heel of the flipper, you can shoot it so reliably. So that's that needs to be made more wild. The other thing that I find, nice pass, the other thing that I find interesting is that when you shoot up to a spinner and it comes back down, that bit, that gate, yeah, yep. that's supposed to make the ball fall back into the correct position. It's really dead. Like there's no bounce to it at all. And the the ball normally when it comes down back through that thing, it'll hit that bit of spring metal and bounce back up sort of more towards the spinner. And it's it's just not doing that at the moment. The the so, it feels watch. like there's no um I, there's just no sort of spring to it. It's like a dead, a dead sort of uh, thing to it. Mm. So yeah, that's definitely not how the uh, original plays. And that, like, I verified that literally this week. So like what it just did right there, where it just kind of hit. It flops. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it should it should have some spring on the return. Like the ball hits up against that. It's actually a one way gate, so it should actually give you a little bit of spring on the okay. way through there. So that's the other point, other critique I've, I've had of the, the tuning. Is just those two things, and back to there. Ah. Oh, lost it. Lost it. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, other than that, though, the um, only other gripe, and I'll see if I can um, get it, uh, is that floating apple there to the right. Oh, I get man. why the apple is there, but thematically, I don't like it. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I would have rather had the atom in the chalice, kind of thing. And if yeah. I can get it to, to go over there, you'll hear it, it's the oddest sound. Does not belong. It's the same sound that uh, you get when um, Deep throws his golf club in um, No Good Gophers. Yeah. Uh, what what shot do I need to do to make it go there, Jared? I forget. Uh, you got to shoot the left ramp and get it through the pinbot lane, and then from the pinbot lane, get it through the right hand um, oh. entry, and that'll go boing on for you. All right. Let's see if we can get the there. sound effect that you want. Go on. There we go. There we are. Let's listen. That's just terrible. <laughs> That's not within theme of the game. No, not at any, all. Any other noise. Any other noise. Like, even someone biting the apple. Right? Just something, something. But that just... Uh, That's just... That's like my like, only gripe of the entire thing. Otherwise, I think yeah. that they did a... Literally every other enhancement is amazing in yeah. this game. But that... But honestly, put that apple... It doesn't even need to be there. Like, no. Uh, and then that's the weirdest I, thing. You're right. It, it, it's completely superfluous and doesn't need to be yeah. there and doesn't add anything. Um, in fact, it detracts from yeah. what is an amazing, well done, nice. I mean, you've got a floating area. space shuttle right there. It, it's, yeah, you don't need another thing. Right no. There. No. The space shuttle is fine. Yeah. I put yeah. so much time into this game when it came out on Pinball Arcade. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> it's just the thing that's interesting is you. It doesn't hand out the billionaire shots that often uh, when I've been playing it. Like sometimes in the Pinball Arcade version, you'll get a guaranteed. Oh yeah, there absolutely. First time round because the ROM resets each time. But I have a feeling that whatever they've got the ROM set to here doesn't. I think the percentage of getting billionaire shot um, uh, is low. I will say if there's one thing I miss from TPA, it's the eyeball balls, because I always played with those, because yeah. it just cracked me up to have her have those lock in. Yeah, that, that, is, that is good. Oh, oh crap! That. Oh! <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> just <laughs> let that settle for a bit. <laughs> All right. You'll notice, folks, I don't nudge. <laughs> no, I, I don't really nudge either. I am no, not I'm a nudger. Things. I've never not a digital been. Pinball. I've you never know, even been in real life. I just I don't know. It's it's an art it's that I've never mastered. Tricks. Yeah, it's all about the flipper tricks. See that? That's like oh, just a tip. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> yep, that one. Oh, was, yep, I saw that yeah, happening. See that all one. Way. <laughs> there's no there's no way you can escape that one. Nope, that was going down. It was predetermined. Yep, it was. That was toasty, toasty, toasty. Goodbye.
Uh, that's a gain, right? Yeah. Do I get initial? I get initials. Yay! Oh, I should say, at least yes. the initials work again. Last time I played this, the initials didn't work. Yeah, you could only put in one, and then this would yeah, go game away. Over. So, so. fix that, and which is good. Um, but anyway, I wanted to show this off just in case people hadn't uh, seen it yet, because... The other thing I really, really love good. about this... So the other thing I really love about the Bridal Pinbot and all the alphanumeric tables is that you don't get any drop frames from the um, alphanumeric display like you did on Farsight's recreations. Like, Farsight, when they had all theirs, they were like, because the way they were animating the, the alphanumeric display, they had to animate each segment separately. Yeah. It was a massive performance hit uh, on their engine. And so they were dropping, dropping animation frames everywhere in it to try and make it work and be more performed. But there's yeah. no such sacrifice in this. It's the the alphanumeric actual, it looks like glass, like the alphanumeric displays actually have that feeling of a glass display. Um, it's just really nice. Yeah, like, it it's is. very authentic, really, really good. So we'll see what uh, what tricks uh, Zen has coming up for us now after the uh, Grim table. It's nice. I mean, I love getting these tables a month. It's great. Um, it's really good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, not only does it give us something to talk about, <laughs> but <laughs> it's also really fun. And, you know, it keeps the platform fresh. Uh, you know, we keep. And on the quality on these has been really about. nice. Um, yeah. We haven't seen a drop in quality for no. each of these releases. It's only been an improvement in the standard. So, yeah. That's pretty good. And so, obviously, we're seeing, uh, you know, these new designers come in. I think we've gotten four now, four new designers. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and as Mel had stated, they're looking to have a total of 12 up and running. So um, if this is any indication of the talent pool that they're uh, pulling from, you know, everybody's been putting in nice stuff so far. So Real nice stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. see uh, what, do we know what... Uh, do we know what's next? Is, is it a, a Williams table on the horizon? I don't I remember if they've seen past July for what the uh, next stuff is. Um, I would say that the next pinball show will probably tell us something new and shiny. Yeah, but I mean, we haven't gotten a roadmap is what I'm what I'm saying. We knew that before it was, mm. oh, there's going to be a Zen Original, two Williams, the Zen Original, um, which I think where we're at right now. Beyond that, I don't think we've gotten a further roadmap. I know that... Um, no. Uh, <laughs> Pinball this 45B sent me a uh, a link to an image. I guess one of the uh, it's a collectible in the game or whatever, but it was over roller skate. And he's like roller games. I'm like, we can hope, but <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And I wouldn't think that it would be available now as an option. I don't know. Um, we'll see. Yeah. Interesting. Yes. Yes. Who yes. Knows? So uh, again, folks, we'll uh, look forward to uh, reading what the comments are. Um, be nice, please. <laughs> yeah, uh, but you can send those nice. comments obviously to uh, our Twitter handle there uh, at Blockade, uh, or you can email us blah blah blockade at gmail dot com. Um, trying to think where we're going from here. Oh, I know what I wanted to say. Also, uh, if you do enjoy what we were just doing here, where we had discussion followed by a little bit of gameplay, um, let us know so that we can maybe do yeah. more gameplay. It's easy enough to set up, and I can do more. Um, or if you just want exclusively gameplay now and then, uh, you know, like whatever. just a dedicated let's play episode without us yeah. rambling on about rubbish, you know, um, well, we're still going to rabbit on about rubbish, but it'll be during <laughs> the gameplay. Exactly. So, yeah. Uh, or maybe you guys want to throw out a challenge <laughs> to me. Um, J Jared's not the one that's going to be playing cause it's gotta be running on my computer. So, uh, yeah, yes. if you want to throw out a challenge, if there's a, if you want us to play live in a tournament, uh, now that those are up. Um, maybe we can do that. Uh, like I said, let us know, and maybe we'll we'll cater to that kind of that kind of thing. Um, again, if there's a point total you want us to do, if there's a mode you want to see, if there's you know whatever, um, we're open to that kind of uh, that kind of experience and throwing that up on here. Um, and it doesn't have to be limited to uh, pinball or to uh, pinball effects either. If there's something in Zachariah, I can bring that up also. So. Or you know, if there's a game that you know is new. And you'd like us to see if we can do a review on it. Uh, let us know. We'll see if we contact the developer and get a key. Right, similar to like what we did with Gravatar review. there and with uh, yeah. uh, uh, Rollers of the Realm Reunion. So yeah, that's right. 
But until then, that's all we've got for this week. Uh, next yeah. time, Jared, what are we talking about? Stuff and things. Probably. Sure. Why not? All right, folks. <laughs> until then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.